everyone. I absolutely do not have a fit of the giggles, but hello and welcome. Uh, we are here this, well, I was going to say evening because I am calling from Futureland, but we are here this afternoon to play a fun game of D&D with all the lovely folks from the marketing team here at Codename Entertainment. But before we get started, before we hop into things, yes, I went there. Uh, we do have some cool things that are out in Idol Champions right now. So just in case you haven't heard yet, there are some skins floating around there that you may want to check out. We have the Polymorph Yorvin, the Polymorph Minsk. We also have the Prismir Sentry and the Prismir Shandy, along with the Shandy Fan Fairy Familiar, correct? Right? I think yes. that's the way that one goes. Yes. Thank you. Along with that, and since you're sitting here in the chat with us, guess what we have more for you? Uh, there is a fantastic Mecha Suit Nova that you can get with a very special code that you'll want to use so that you too can add this to your collection. So basically not saying, I don't either. It, I, was, you know. it was everywhere. It was all, it, it, there were oh, no us, it was just it. <laughs> oh, just, yeah, so it's like, ta-da, I can't mm -hmm. banner white it. So basically I'm not saying right now, log into the game, but after you watch this game, go to your game and log in and make sure you get all that loveliness for your gameplay today, tomorrow, you know, check it out. And the best and last thing I wanna mention before we start up, you can also access Blushy, who Yay. if you haven't seen Blushy yet, oh my God, you gotta check it out because Blushy is just like big hearts everywhere. <laughs> so that being said, hi, I am Muse. I will be your DM today. And I'm gonna go around from what I can see on the window in front of me and have y'all introduce yourselves and tell us who you are playing and then we're going to uh, go into having some fun at my favorite place to visit, Phoebe's Place. So I'm going to start with you, Lauren. Oh, great. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator here at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. I'm going to be playing Tallulah Romley Ambrosia III, who is a Minotaur artificer. Excellent. Moving to you, Todd. Please, you, you, you can speak. Just don't let your camera do the moving with you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Todd. <laughs> there it goes. Uh, I was going to say, now it won't do it. I figured best to mention it ahead of time so people are going, what's going on with we Todd's a, camera? We have a secret familiar in this uh, this game. It is the camera. <laughs> I'm playing an astral elf moon sorcerer named Torvin. That's Excellent. It. And shifting over to Dylan. Hi, I'm Dylan. <laughs> Hi. You guys okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, Hi, I am Dylan. playing uh, Virian, a uh, a Dampier Bard Warlock. I just Fantastic. appreciate that you're you're trying to even out the the energy of this room and <laughs> just, just uh -huh. keep it mellow, <laughs> keeping it good. Fantastic. And finally, Trevor. <laughs> Uh, hi, I am Trevor, and I am playing Garlock, a uh, sorcerer, a goblin sorcerer who thinks he's a wizard. Fantastic. And Trevor's also running production. So yes. thank you so much for that one, Trevor. And Trevor, who do we have as our moderators? Uh, as well? I believe our mods are Jay and Martin. Thank you very much, Jay and Martin, for joining us. I always appreciate your presence in the chat. So that being said, who's ready to play some um, Dungeons and Dragons? I suppose. Yes. I could be Yeah, persuaded. maybe. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So let's have some fun because this is going to be two hours of pretty much silliness, uh, goofiness, and uh, intrigue. So let's see how that pans out. So you all arrived last night and you had gotten this mysterious letter not too long ago. And it's basically asking for your services as an adventurer. And the letter specifically said, you know, make sure if you want to agree to this, that you pick up this letter, you read it at this time, at this place. And you did. And as you read that letter, that letter started glowing blue to purple to blue to purple. And then as it started to almost disintegrate in front of you, you realized that your hands and your arms and the rest of your body followed suit. And when you sort of came back to, you were standing in front of this very grandiose house. It was three stories high, yellow. There were these large green shutters around all the windows. There was a patio that ran around the first floor and then a porch that ran around the second floor and this massive double door at the very front at the top of the stairs and you all arrived at the same time but you quickly caught on to the fact that something similar must have happened to all of you because you're all standing there sort of holding this letter with a confused look on your face so you finally decided to go up these stairs you knocked on the door 
And a little panel opened up at the top of one of the doors and you saw these eyes peering out at you, basically saying, what's the password? And you finally figured out that there was a password that had basically appeared on each of your letters magically instead of the text that had been there before. You gave the password, you were welcomed in. In fact, when you came in, the place had a whole bunch of patrons inside. There was music playing. There were food and drinks being served by a variety of waiters and waitresses. You were shown to the front desk where the young lady was more than happy to say hi and welcome and give you the rundown of what was going on. Welcome, this is Bibi's place. So happy that you've agreed to help Bibi out. Tell you what, it's getting late. Let's make sure everyone gets all comfortable. You had a fantastic dinner over the bar area. And by the time you had your fill of food and drink, you were then escorted up to your lovely suites on the second floor where you all comfortably fell asleep. The next morning, you had a knock at the door and you were told that Bibi would like to see you before lunch. So you had some time to have some breakfast, get comfortable. And as you sort of were getting yourselves ready, what would we see as viewers for what your characters look like? Lauren, I will start with you since we started with you before. So what does Tallulah look like as Tallulah is getting ready for the day? I'd imagine Tallulah, Tallulah is early to wherever she needs to be for this meeting so she can find the most comfy seat that has the best view of the room. Uh, she is a tawny minotaur with white spots who is currently wearing what looks like a Billy Porter inspired uh, tuxedo dress in blues and whites and blacks. And if you look really closely, you think that there, there might be maybe some armor woven into the fabric. Unsure. She's got glasses perched on the end of her nose and two big horns, just completely shining, polished black. At her side, seated in a very proper pose, is a small mechanical corgi, and perched on top of one of her horns is a small mechanical bird. And she has found a book from somewhere. Maybe she brought it. Maybe it's just here in the room. And she's just idly reading. Lovely. So as Tallulah is reading, Todd, what does it look like as uh, Corvin? Is getting ready. Uh, <laughs> Torvin is a big, like six foot six Viking looking dude. He is completely ripped. His shirt doesn't fit remotely. In fact, it, it just, he's like, this seems like clothes I should wear at this location. Um, he, he doesn't have any currently any weapons on him or, or maybe he does. He's getting ready in the mirror and uh, he's making sure everything got teleported um, mm -hmm. on his person or what's connected to him. Like all, yep. all the fingers and toes are there. So he's a little concerned about all of this. Very uncomfortable with the whole the house, the teleporting, all of it. Uh, not very excited. He's got all these weird giant runes carved into his hair. He looks very out of place. He looks like he's doing his best human impression. And he's got a uh, e eclipses for eyes. Ooh, I love it. That's very cool. So then we have uh, Virian across the way from Torvin's room. What would Virian be doing to get ready this morning? Virian hasn't looked in a mirror in quite a long time. Uh, but you would see someone uh, tall and very slender. Uh, you know, almost supernaturally gaunt. I don't know why. Long, flowing, wavy black hair, golden eyes. And uh, uh, they traded clothes with someone the night before. So they're wearing uh, jeans and a t-shirt and like leather boots. And they're like, oh, this, this should be interesting for today. And just kind of casually strolling out. Okay. And finally, we have um, just a few doors down from Torvin's room. We have Garlock. Uh, Gar Garlock gets out of bed. Does a little stretch, hops out of there in his boxers that have little owlbear faces with hearts over their eyes. And uh, he, he gets ready the same way he does every morning. He throws out his way too big wizard robes and he crawls his way inside of it. Uh, and uh, once he uh, gets the robes on, grabs his uh, big red hat, wizard hat that he puts on that, was, uh, that his staff was holding up. And he picks up the staff and he goes, okay, you work today. You're a fire staff. You make fire. Remember that. He just waddles his way out of the room. <laughs> okay. So you would all get a knock at your door um, and you each respectively have a maid sort of saying, oh, you know, 
baby's ready to see you. If you'd follow me and they'll escort you down what ends up being this open balcony over the main area of the first floor. And as you work your way around this wide rectangular area that has potted plants and this beautifully ornate carved wood for the banister, she leads you to another set of double doors on the second floor and opens them wide. And you enter this library and you can see it is floor to ceiling books and it is dark woods and it is leather bound books with gold emblems and everything like that, like intricate writing. You even see some scrolls sticking out in some of the places. And as your foot falls onto the ground, you feel this plush give of this beautifully woven carpet underneath your feet. And even though it is warm, there is still a fire in the fireplace going off to the left-hand side, but it's not really putting off any heat. It's more there for ambience than anything else. So you hear this lovely crackling sound and there's this soft light dispersing through the entire room. And it's only then as you start taking in your surroundings, you hear this voice start speaking to all of you. Ah, I see you got my invitation. Please do take a seat. And when you look up, you see there is this large ornate desk with these two carved angels at the corners whose wings are lifted back and holding up the top of the desk. And behind the desk sits this woman. She's in petite, she's petite in frame and she's sitting in this very large wing back red leather chair. On her lap is this honey yellow cat who's curled up into this tight little ball. It almost looks like a cinnamon bun because it's so curled upon itself. And she's just scratching it behind the ear, but she's got a very pleasant smile upon her face and her sharp green eyes are taking in each of you. And you can see set to the side on either are two chairs and two chairs. So Lula is going to walk up and immediately uh, go to one of the far chairs so that Reginald has a place to sit as well. Thank you very much. This is a very lovely study. I'm very impressed and will sit as daintily as a minotaur can. Uh, thank you. I thought you'd be more uncomfortable in this type of environment based upon uh, what my dossier had to say about you. I'm sorry. Um... Oh, there was a word about a baby we we're supposed to no darling bb um bb it's short for bianca beltane oh no i thought we were picking up a baby or there was a giant baby that was in charge or something like oh, that Oh no you should have answered my advertisement about two weeks ago then there would have been a baby to pick up well do you sell babies here no don't sell babies but it was a kidnapping issue however do please take a seat and i can catch up on what it is i do need uh, your help with right now i take the tiniest chair <laughs> <laughs> and try okay. to fit inside I okay so it's it's like one of those little queen anne settees almost that she it has like these very spindly legs so as you sit down you hear that <laughs> of the legs kind of giving away and you see the seams just pull just ever so slightly. And while the stuffing isn't coming out, you can tell that the stuffing is, you know, a mix of wool and horse hair. Gar Garlock sits in the chair next to him and is leaning over the side, like really close to him. And he goes, I've never said this before. I can't read your hair. What does it say? It says back off. <laughs> oh, well, that's fair. And backs off. So, uh, <laughs> Louisiana has goblins now. Okay. Well, this part of Louisiana has pretty much anyone and anything who cares to come for a visit. It's a special little establishment. As this is happening, I'm just kind of mostly been browsing the library and uh, uh, myself. But when uh, uh, when Torvin talks about what the side of his hair says, I kind of like turn and I'll, I'll cast comprehend languages on myself. Okay. And I'll just look at it to read what it says and I'll just read it out loud. Okay. So what would uh <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. What would Virian be reading on Torben's hair? <laughs> I know this actually. Uh yeah, it's one one side of his head says shield. Um and the other side of the head says uh cloud. Which which side is facing me? Shield. I'm like, hmm, shield. I don't know what I expected. I just kind of <laughs> go and I sit down. How oh, very practical. Well, uh, uh, did you all sleep comfortably last night? Yes, very. No, I no, wasn't in the dirt. That's an improvement. 
Oh God. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, this is a very soft bed. If you're into that sort of thing. Would you prefer something a little bit um, more uh, rustic? Yes. Perhaps? Not dirt like Garlock wants, but uh, yeah. Perhaps more uh, campsite cot. Yeah. I think I'll see what the staff can do. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get that range. Uh, probably something along the seven foot long range, uh, considering. And she's looking at the chair that's kind of doing this trembling thing, even though you're sitting more still than anything else. The chair is afraid of me. I, um, <laughs> yeah, like eight feet would be good. And uh, yeah, may a bucket Bear of dirt. Rug? May a bucket of dirt for my friend Garlock so he feels comfortable. Oh, no, I liked oh. that I wasn't. It was a nice change. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I misread that situation. It's okay. No. If you want me to get you some dirt, though, if you want me to stick you in a hole <laughs> in the ground, I will keep let me know. that in mind. <laughs> Perfect. I do have a gardener if that would help. That kills goblins? What? No, plants them. <laughs> oh, sorry, what? girl. Like, I'm kidding. What? That's a joke. No, no. It's it's all right. It's a funny. Okay. <laughs> well, while they're talking, I'm just going to gently reach out with one hand and touch the the seat that he's um breaking at the moment i'm gonna cast mending and very quickly fix it never taking my eyes off of our host and you hear the wood kind of like do that nice little sound and it's looking practically new again thank Uh, you and how about you uh virian everything all right in your accommodations i wouldn't mind tastier guests tastier again oh i will make note of that Right. And she'll quickly flip open a book and write something down and flips the book back closed and sets her little quill back in its little rest. I would love and, to have seen what was in that book when she opened it up, like read okay. whatever. Then I uh, give me a perception check because it was a quick flip open, scribble and flip back down. Not enough time for insight. Sure. It's a 22. Hey. You will see uh, quickly, uh, you see a name. It looks something, something like Vermeer and then underneath it, tell Evie. I just keep that to myself for the moment. Okay, not a problem. So Bianca, after she makes this note, she scratches the head of this cat that's curled up on her lap and the cat sort of stretches itself out. And as the legs stretch forward, these two wings pop up one on either side and stretch out in full and sort of fan out and then wrap themselves entirely around its form as it hunkers back down. And she just continues to scratch the head in the back of this cat as she's speaking to you and kind of tickling under its chin every so often. And you hear this cat's purring start to emanate through the room. And BB basically looks up and says, so as I mentioned in my letter, I need some assistance. Uh, It seems that something I thought was not happening is happening again. See, there's been this persnickety issue of, well, people going missing after they have paid a visit here which is something of a concern because I pride myself on having an establishment where people can come feel safe and comfortable, which is not the case when, you know, a guest here or there suddenly is gone for unexplained reasons. Now, I have some associates of mine who I'm going to be meeting with, and it's not exactly on my comfort level to leave my place unattended without knowing that I have some extra help on hand. So I was hoping perhaps you could do two things for me protect the place, and maybe see if you can find out the cause for this missing persons issue. I'm happy to pay you in full once everything gets figured out. It's 200 uh, 200 gold pieces. Is that um, amenable to you all? Are they shiny gold pieces? I can have them polished before they're given to you, yes. Then yes. Is that 200 for each of these tasks or 200 total? 200 total for each of you. Um, now that it's going to come up, one of us dies. Um, I'll bring you back. The, oh, I was just wondering how it gets split then. Well, if you had trouble bringing them back, like what well, if you didn't have enough? Well, if you'd like to get a will established before, to you're absolutely them. welcome to. Like if, if you want to sit down. The garlic had no head. What? Yeah, which would be tragic. No, sorry. That would be like. tragic and rather difficult. Here's yeah. to hoping that won't be the case. So, I mean, if you I if like you want to take a hour here or there and just quickly, you know, I bequeath my 200 gold pieces too and write that in, I'm sure we can get the notary down here. No garlic, I, I, gar- garlic, I like your head too. Th- it's a, thank, it's a good you. noggin. I appreciate it. 
especially around that whale. ears thing. Yeah, they're 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 mine. Yeah. For now. What? I think. Are we supposed to be working together on yeah. this? Oh yeah, no, we're working together. She's Ideally. still addressing BB. She hasn't even looked at anybody else. Ideally, yes, I have found that um many hands make a lot of work. Hmm. Well, I I come with my own hands, thank you very much. But I guess if you vouch for them, then I will at least try. I feel that their abilities will uh, come in handy. As long as the ears stay where they are supposed to be, I guess. And now she finally looks on over. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, well, Garlock, I think his ears will prove quite useful every so often. Perhaps uh, give them a chance. Well, let's put my ears to good use and find out a little bit more about these missing patrons of yours. Do you have any additional information besides that they just leave and are never heard from again? Oh, of course. It seems to be it's something that's cropped up over the past uh, week or so. We've had three people suddenly not coming back. And uh, normally when they go out for a walk or if they decide that they want to go in town and visit, they come back. And that has not been the case. Now, it's one of those things where um, I'm concerned and I want to see if there is something going on around here that uh, may be untold. Or maybe it's just a matter of, uh, do I need to get new service staff because they're just not pleased with the service they're getting here? So these were three people who still had accommodations here and just did not return. Correct. Hmm. Can you give me any more information about these three people? Certainly. Uh, one was an older fellow. He wore a quite uh, dashing looking top hat, uh, had this mustachioed face, and he wore a monocle. So he changed which eye every so often, much to the consternation of everyone he met. Uh, the second one was a young lady, a, an heiress, actually, which is, quite frankly, what sort of alerted everyone when her uh, father called us and wanted to let us know that uh, he wanted to speak to her. No one could find her. Uh, and finally, we had a lovely little matron who stopped by, uh, very large grass, glasses and this uh, gray hair upon her head. And she wore this lovely little uh, green shawl cardigan all the time that had little candy stuffed into the pockets. Garlock's going to raise his hand. Yes, Garlock. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of words in there that I didn't understand, but I think I kind of picked up what's up. But also, oh. it, it, is 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 this place haunted? The bar, A lot of bars that I work at are haunted, and they, they're usually the problem. Yes, but the ghost works for me. Oh, it is like that. Okay, cool. Never mind. I know how this works. Excellent. Garlock, if if you ever need to be reminded of that, um, Rupert here can help us. And she points to the little bird on her on her horn that's been perched and it opens its mouth and spends six seconds repeating everything that you just said. Whoa, it's a me bird. Oh, it it repeated BB, not you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a BB bird. <laughs> it's a BB bird. Oh dear God! No, uh, their name is Rupert. Thank you very much. I would Rupert prefer that you BB refer bird. to them by their name. Rupert the BB bird. Got it. Yes, Rubab exactly. The baby bird. <laughs> Rhubarb, the baby bird. Yeah. yeah. I finally turned to Virian and I'm like, and and you are you also having problems staying focused? <laughs> this seems to please me very much. I'll turn back to Bibi. No names for any of these people. Well, I can uh, give you their names if you would like. We had um, Charlie, was the old gentleman. The young lady is Missy. And the dear old woman, well, she's just Granny. Although I think I heard Annie, uh, Amy call her Granny Ann. Granny Annie. It was Granny Amy. Check with Evie. We will do. Are there any other concerns or uh, information I can give you that you think would help? And I'd, I'd be more than happy to. And as she's saying this, suddenly this contraption that's on the end of her desk starts making this ringing noise. 
and it's loud and it's piercing. And actually the cat startles and jumps off her lap and trots away as the wings sort of flap around. Oh, just, just one moment. Give me just, let me just, and she'll pick it up and she holds this golden device to her ear. And you see that there is this handle and on either side, there are these cup like objects. And she holds one cup to her mouth and one cup to her ear. And you hear her go, yes, hello. Yes, Evie, of course it's Bebe. What do you mean? I thought we had this under control, darling. Uh, right now? And she'll look up at the four of you. I have them here right now with me. Yes. Darling, I'll be right there. And she quickly hangs up this object and you hear this click. Um, how are y'all with animals? Oh, I'm, I'm really good with owl bears. Right, follow me. And she will get up and she brushes this fur off of her dress and she scoots around her desk and scoots past all of you and walks to the doors which you came in. And she's not even looking back to see if you follow. You just hear her heels like quickly clattering along the hard wood in the hallways as she starts making her way downstairs. Do you follow? Does she leave that book there on the desk? She's tucked the book away. Oh, damn, okay. I, I will kind of just wait for everybody else to leave. And if okay. everybody else leaves, then I'll follow, but I'm not following first. I I also <laughs> refuse to follow first. <laughs> Garlock is following first. And he also has his hand up to his ear like this. Go, Evie? Is Evie? This doesn't work. And he just follows her. I imagine that Torvin and Varian are just both like, oh, I'm going to walk out. Oh, no. Like that little like, standoff oh, shuffle. Oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, um, Tallulah give me will... Dex straight up. Oh, go ahead, Tallulah. Tallulah first, gonna... and then we'll deal with you. Tallulah is going to follow Garlock, get to the door, turn back and look at the two of you and smile and walk away. And I'm going to follow Phoebe, but I want Rupert to go on back and see what they're doing. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so between the two of you for uh, Virian and Torvin, please give me a, let's put this as acrobatics check. From each of you. Acrobatics. Mm -hmm. So um, you look pale. You, you mentioned eating people or is that like a new thing? Or? Oh, disgusting. No, oh, I drink okay. their blood. Oh, <laughs> um, never mind. That's normal. 18. 18? <laughs> uh, I got a 22. 22. Okay. So uh, for you, uh, Torvin, you luckily do manage to keep on your feet. As the rug sort of flips itself and does this rolling action to roll you two closer to the door, uh, for you, Virian, you manage to stay on your feet perfectly fine. In fact, it almost looks like you knew it was coming as you quickly shuffle out of the way of this big wave that happens in the middle of this carpet as it leads you out the door. Virian, watch out. The rug is very rude. <laughs> and pushy. <laughs> and flipsy. As he leaves, I just kind of like look down at the rug and wink. And then walk out the door. And a little tassel will wave goodbye to you as you walk out. And the doors close get the themselves. <laughs> I'm going to catch so, up to Garlock. <laughs> okay. So as you play catch up, you see that BB has stopped sort of midway up the stairs. And at the bottom of the stairs where you see her gaze is that young woman that you saw at the reception desk last night. And that very tall gentleman who answered the door, he has, you know, this grayish skin and these two prominent teeth that poke out in this underbite that he has going. And she has her hair nicely coiffed and she's wearing this lovely little gray outfit. And both of them are staring at this little pup who is standing there trembling between the two of them, eyes wide and super alert. And you just keep hearing them say, it's okay, Beauregard, it's okay. And the fellow says, yo, yep, yo. Yep. Oh God, you know, it's, it's no big deal. It was just, just a bang. It was just a fallout in the kitchen, not to worry. As this puppy is standing there trembling and you notice that no one else in this area dares to move as they're all looking at this pup. What would you like to do? Even baby is just sort of saying there, like, you know, hand on her chest, looking a little concerned. Why is everyone afraid of the puppy? That's, that was going to be my question as well. I just lean all the way over to Garlock and just in his ear. Why don't you go look and find out? Okay! And Garlock's gonna walk forward. <laughs> and, okay. and, and he's gonna walk forward and he goes, hi, 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 new pupper friend. 
So you just walk him, go, hi, pupper friend, type of thing? Little, little cautious. He, he, little he, cautious. Garlock can read a room sometimes. <laughs> okay. Then, Garlock, please give me an animal handling check since oh, you are putting boy. effort into. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just huh? the diet is. Okay. Um, four. Mm. <laughs> so... Garlock, with the best of intentions, as you walk towards this little pup who looks sort of like a, a, a tiny little um, blend of a dog. So it's got a little bit of lab and a little bit of a German shepherd in it. And it looks up at you as you say this and you hear this sound as you startle the bejesus out of it with your animal handling check. And you notice, Garlock, that this little puppy is suddenly increasing drastically and quickly in size as its form begins to keep filling up the room in its entirely Entirety, I need you to give me a dexterity save, please. <laughs> Garlock goes, not Actually, tiny pupper, big pupper, big pupper. A strength, <laughs> strength, please. Me, strength? Yes, you strength. Just the diet is. It's been 15. a while, but usually the pup puppies don't get bigger, right? That's, I mean, they do get, but they're puppies. They get bigger, but they don't get like that much bigger. Not that fast, no. Okay, I wasn't sure if time was working differently or Mayor Garlock was shrinking. So I mean, the, Gar- both those things might be possible, but I believe just this dog is getting very big, very fast. But then that would mean the speakeasy was being relative size, who's was shrinking. So I, I'm suspecting the puppy has gone big. I believe your suspicions are correct, but let's watch and see what happens, shall we? Don't die, Garlock. <laughs> Trying! <laughs> So, Garlock, luckily you are able to see as this pup is increasing in size that you sort of are able to quickly get up and move out of the way and get yourself further up the stairs as this pup goes from this very small little puppy to this huge puppy. It is still a puppy. It has not turned into another creature, but it is this puppy very much increased in size to the point where now when it turns its head, it is basically looking at all of you and you feel the very warm breath coming from its suit as it goes <sighs> out of fear taking you all in. In fact, your hair even blows back and your clothes, you know, blow in the breeze. That is this little puppy's very strong breath. As Garlock's hiding up the stairs, he goes, bad puppy! And uh, where he flicks the staff, like, posies pop up out of the floor in front of the dog and he goes, that was supposed to be way more intimidating! Those are angry flowers! Not good flowers! And now we roll for initiative. Uh... (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. (laughs) Garlock. Oh, let me know what you each got. I Oof. don't know how not to play the person with the impulse control problem. I'm trying to contain everything inside me. I got four. Wow, our rolls suck. Yeah, uh, all of our rolls really suck. You I got last. Two. You're first. Next, you got next a time. two, Tallulah. What did you get? Yeah. Uh, my initiative is an eight. Eight and Garlock? Three. <laughs> <laughs> Then we died. Oh, Jesus. Okay, and I just got a, a nat 20 on the pup, so the pup will be going first. Wait. I mean, I see this as none of us want to attack a puppy, and we're just yes. intentionally holding yes. back. That we're oh. trying to be good. 100%. Mm-hmm. Okay, and BB just got a 13. <laughs> so as this puff, pup huffs its air in front of you, uh, it sort of leans forward, and it's going to like do like this snuffling sound and sort of like taking the scent of the flowers that Garlock just sort of shot out. And you hear this sound as its tail starts to wag a little bit, but it's actually wagging between the columns of the two staircases. So it's actually making the whole house shake. So along with hearing the dunk, 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 you hear rattle, 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 the chandeliers downstairs. You hear a few people going, clear out type of situation. And you notice that there are folks who are making their way towards the far side of the bar and the far side of the dance floor as this tail is just wagging itself back and forth. Um, so actually it's the house that's taking some uh, slam damage because of this tail that is frantically wagging, wagging and uh, looking at the flowers that Garlock just produced. Uh, next, BB, she is going to quickly turn to all of you. I, I don't suppose any of you, um, like I said, have a way with animals, preferably calming them down? To be honest, most of the animals that I work with, I control, I create. But uh, I can see what Reginald and I can do as long as nothing else gets destroyed. All right, then you take the... Um upper area and I'm going to go downstairs and make every, sure, sure everyone else is safe and she's going to Misty, Misty step herself downstairs 
And you actually see her appear in the far dance floor area. And she's starting to usher people out of the way of this tail that's going between the two areas. Uh, that takes us now to, let's see here. Virian, you are up with your with eight. With an eight? Oh, man. <laughs> yes, I knew we rolled that. I just didn't realize we rolled quite went. that bad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to kind of like, just, just taking this in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to hold my action uh, mm -hmm. to cast uh, Animal Friendship if the dog makes a hostile move. Okay. Fair enough. So we have uh, and also and... step back a bit so that okay. That so you're gonna move your way I to the top want of the stairs then. Torvin's giant body in between me and this giant dog. Yeah, okay. you do. So you can very easily sort of back your way up to the top of the stairs again. That'll give you about yeah 15 feet. If you want to use an additional 15, you can go up and around the balcony. Yeah, the the loot just kind of like appears in my hands, and I'm just kind okay. of like waiting to strum arm up. Rock on. Okay, very cool. In the uh, ready position. <laughs> Torvin, you're up with your four. Bad puppy. First off, much bigger than you should be, according to everyone in this room. And there's, I don't know if you're scared or angry or you got the yips or uh, maybe, no, you, do you need to poop? I don't really do animal handling. <laughs> I'm going to roll it. <laughs> Let's do an animal handling. I got a 13, and I'm going to use a sorcery point to re-roll that. Okay. And it's a less. It's a 12. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, uh, uh. Bad puppy, know, like, stop being big. Stop being big right now. You're scaring the house. So every time you say bad puppy, its head kind of like ducks down a little bit, and ears go flat, and its big eyes start looking water, and you just hear go, hum, hum, hum each time and it increases a little bit in size i think garlock scared it <laughs> it's getting bigger uh, is there anything else you'd like to try any movement you'd like to make yeah i'll do it wow god i don't want to kill the puppy <laughs> you you actually hear garlock from uh up the stairs go i have an idea uh well, I had an idea as well, but if you had something more specific you want to uh, fill us in, please. It gets bigger when it's scared. Let's make it happy. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I will take your advice immediately. All right, Torvin, anything you would like to do? I'm going to hold back. <laughs> okay. Because like, Tor Torvin's like, it's like, pretty much everything I do is kill, so <laughs> kill. <laughs> That's a kill. <laughs> so kill. That's, that's a kill. That's a kill. Also a kill. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. that's a kill. Listen, those are very <laughs> useful skills to have, and the fact that you are holding them back in this situation is admirable. Kill a bunch of people. No, no. Uh, go ahead. I'm just <laughs> looking through. You know, sorry, I wrote them. I wrote everything down in my hand. So in my big bulging muscles. Uh, you can go ahead, Garlock or whoever. Is so in this case, uh, that would then bring us up to, uh, yes, Garlock, it is now your turn in initiative. I, did I get skipped? You are two. He's a three. Oh, okay. Yep. I, I thought did, he went at the top of the initiative with the flowers and everything. You're at a okay. three. I need you at His a two. His in action in, <laughs> instigated it. So uh, we're starting fresh at the top. Uh, Garlock is actually going to come down the stairs now, and he's going to hold out his staff, which is a normal size step and he's going to try and shake it like a bone like for a dog and he's going to be like do, do you want the st the uh treat treat yeah <laughs> okay. treat big giant um, treat tell you what i'm going to give you a choice gonna here take it and he's going to go <laughs> whichever is better you can do deception or persuasion um both are good actually <laughs> there you go um i think he's going to do uh i think he's going to do persuasion Okay. That, oh, wow. Uh, that is a 26. Ooh. Well, absolutely. With that 26, you see that this pup Beauregard, its eyes focus down towards, in fact, they almost go cross-eyed because Garlock being so small and this pup being so big. The eyes go cross as it looks down. And you do hear, it's like, getting like, <laughs> like those excited little sounds that dogs will make when they see a treat that they like. 
except obviously it's bigger. So it's like, <laughs> and every single time there's this, you know, big puff of air with each expression that it's making. Um, but you do have the pup's attention and it's looking quite excited about this treat in front of it. Uh, yeah, he, he's, Sweet. he's just gonna like, he's gonna, uh, move it a little bit and then toss it to the, to the dog. Okay. So, um, We'll say this is a reaction as a reaction because you've thrown the treat towards the dog. Does not catch it. Aww. So it, it attempts to. So you see these, you know, these floppy jowls, they open up wide and boom, try and catch it. But it's like those dogs that you'll see um, in videos who go and they try and catch the tennis ball. It like bops off their nose oh, and they're no. convinced they're going to get it. They're so convinced it's going to happen. Doesn't happen. But it's now got these confused puffed up ears as it's looking down because it can't move around too much. It's pretty yeah. much encapsulated by this area in the house. So it's heads looking back and forth on the stairs and you see it's confusingly looking at the stairs for this treat that you threw it. And it, that brings us to anything else. Nope. nope you're nope. going to move or you're going to stay. I, I, I moved to get up to it. So, okay. Uh, you have about 15 feet. So if you have, 30 you could dash back up if you were not dash but move back up if you want. No, wanted to. I think I think Garlic's going to stay here. Um if he moved any forward it would just be like pick up the staff to give it to the dog but I okay. think I got enough actions for that. So I will just okay. stay where I am. Great. So then that brings us to Tallulah and friends. Excellent. D do I see where the staff fell? It has sort of clattered and rolled itself down the stairs and it's not quite at the base because the upper portion of Beauregard's paw is placed towards the bottom of the stairs. So it's actually kind of sitting right against its paw, but because this is such a delicate little staff in comparison to this very huge dog, doesn't feel it there. Wonderful. Uh, Garlock, let me help you a little bit with your brilliant idea. Rupert, uh, Reginald, friendship mode, please. And you watch as the, the little mechanical corgi that's been very obediently sitting next to me goes trotting on up in a very friendly manner, walks up to where the staff is. Um, for my action, I'm going to cast Prestidigitation to make that staff taste amazing as Reginald is going to pick it up and in the most doggy way possible, offer it as, you know, like one dog to another of here, here's a toy. Let's play together. Okay. All right. So um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. What is the puppy's name again? Your Corgi's name again? Reginald. Reginald. It is Reginald. Rupert and Reginald. Just making yes. sure I have my R's correct. All right. So Reginald, uh, if he could give me a, um, let's do a performance check. Oh, okay. And you can use yours if you That's, want. That's, that would be, I would prefer that. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Performance. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually I don't prefer that. Wow. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I forgot. I forgot how uh, with advantage. stuck up. Let's do with advantage too, because you also have Rupert yeah. helping out. Okay. That's good because I forgot the, the stuck up makes things hard. Okay. That's a 17. Okay. So um, Reginald offering up this treat, you see this uh, puppy put its large mouth down and it ever so does like it does like the thing with the lips that dogs do when they really want to take something but they don't want to bite you and they really are trying their best so you see this puppy's lips kind of moving up and down and the teeth like just dee -dee -dee -dee, and it'll very carefully take one side of the staff and hopefully be able to lift it from Reginald's mouth Reginald oh, yeah. let go Reginald okay. will let go like a like the good dog he is okay and it will chomp on this stick that is placed in front of it. That tastes delicious. That tastes delicious. Is there anything else you would like to do, Tallulah? Uh, no, Reginald is going to stay next to the giant puppy and I will, from a little bit of a distance away, say, oh, good, good job, Beauregard. Very, very good job. You enjoy that treat. And that's okay. what I'm going to do. Okay, uh, but as you do this, you see that Beauregard does sort of reduce in size. It's not that any sound is made, but you see that suddenly there's sunlight coming back through a couple of areas of windows that have been blocked off before. We don't so hear Beauregard like a, is about. We don't hear like a, a, the noise of air escaping. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just puppy. Yeah, it's just sort of like, you know, shrinking down in size slowly. So it's, it's probably about three quarters of the size that he was uh, initially. Because mm. he's brought back down. Um, so that, if that is all you would like to do there, Tallulah, that brings us back up to the top with the pup and still kind of wedged 
in this area because the balcony is sort of acting as like this stop gap for it to be able to duck under and try and get to more open spaces. Um, and you hear still people are kind of moving around and trying to get out of the way. Uh, luckily, this pup is not, you know, doing things too much with its feet because, again, it's too wedged in there. Uh, so uh, let's see. Beauregard is going to, again, keep its tail. Actually, the tail picks up in speed because now it has a little bit more room. So, again, you hear this dunk, 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 dunk going on and everything starts rattling the house. In fact, this time there's some dust coming down uh, from the roof of the house and uh, you hear one of the windows crack downstairs. So the house is basically taking damage. <laughs> Oh, that's what mending is for. It'll be fine. <clears throat> Excellent. So that's really all this puppy can do. And that brings us back again to Virian. <laughs> the puppy is a siege monster. <laughs> uh, how is, how's like, about how much has the, uh, has the puppy shrunk so far? Like, is, 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 it, is, it, is it appearing to me like it's going at a really quick It's closer pace, to large than it was to huge. Okay. Um, yeah, why not? I will cast um, Animal Friendship. Okay. Uh, with one charge of my loot, Ooh. the DC 15 Wisdom Saving Throw. 15 Wisdom. Well, let's see how we do here. Uh, that absolutely does not make the save. Uh, Beauregard got a three. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, so I just kind of like strum a little bit you know, mm -hmm. saying, uh, 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 just kind of like saying like, here, doggy, doggy, like, just like, kind of like strumming <laughs> lightly and I'll just walk over and I'll just put my hand on his, uh, like behind his ear and just kind of like give him a scratch and just kind of like okay. start trying to calm him down. Check something quickly here. I like the vampire's going to eat the puppy. <laughs> what? <laughs> so it happens. <clears throat> As, as soon as you start going here, puppy, puppy, and you go to scritch Beauregard, Beauregard continues to shrink down in size. So it's almost like your arm starts up here and it starts going down like this. <gasps> oh God, that's what happened to you, Carlock. Someone was nice to you. <gasps> what? I was big? Yeah, you might have been big once and then people were nice to you. They were nice to me. But that's I why I'm so big. Actually, I kind of so, prefer it being small for the option was them trying to kill me like they always did, so that's fine. You're a good goblin, Garlock. Good goblin. So, yeah. Virian, what do you do as this quickly shrinking huge pup goes back down to this very small pup that you initially saw? However, it's no longer shaking. In fact, Beauregard comes bounding up the stairs back to you, sits down promptly like a good boy, and his tail is wagging furiously. And he's just looking up at you like you are the best thing since sliced bread. But like, Garlock, more food. And I just kind of like hold up my hand like, more, more food for the dog. I don't carry food for animals. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I kind of look at you, or humans. <laughs> goblins, or I, I, I poke Garlock in the question. belly and I cast Minor Illusion to make a squeaky toy noise when I do. <laughs> well, that's new. Look. <laughs> Toy. <laughs> okay, luckily, um, <laughs> Beauregard is so enamored of Virian, he like doesn't pay attention to Garlock's squeaky belly. <laughs> I thought but you are you are now out of initiative. You have charmed this little fellow back to his original size, and he feels um, perfectly comfortable with you all now. When when, when Virian does hold out his hand to Garlock, Garlock's like, I mean, okay, I don't know if he'll like it, and he just hands you like three onions out of different pockets. I'm just like, what, what, what are these? Onions. Huh. And I'm like, ah. and like, you can see my fangs. I'm like, ah. <laughs> it's, not, like, it's not garlic. <laughs> no, I'm garlic. It's all like, close enough. That explains a lot. Mm. And so, I just kind of uh, pick him up and I just kind of, I'm going to walk because this, there's a, this is like a, like a pub. Uh, on the lo lower it's, floor. It's basically, it? it's you're heading back to the main level and as you're going down this flight of stairs to your right will be the bar, which is, it has tables, it has chairs, it even has booths flanking on the sides. Do they and have the any of those, little, those little dishes of like peanuts or something? Oh, or you're kinda, like, like in what would be a sitting area. So yeah, there's like little bowls. I just, bowl I just scoop one there. of those up and just kind of like yep. stick it underneath the dog's face. Oh, and Beauregard, will, you have them in your arm still? Yeah, just kind of like. Yeah, Beauregard. Yeah, I'm starting to look... <laughs> 
<laughs> like a valley girl. I've got like got my dog <laughs> under my arm and I'm feeding it as I'm walking through the bar. Do my you think hair. Actually, you know. that this puppy ate those three people and that we have solved the case? If no? that's true, that means that we're going to be on um, doggy duty duty for a little while, correct? Yeah, I guess we have to wait till it poops and then we'll know if like three dead skeletons come out. I mean, usually the skeletons are dead. Not always. Nope, <laughs> true. Uh, also, Gar Garlock is going to tug on, uh, sorry, Lar what was your character's name? Tallulah. Tallulah. There we go. Tallulah. Um, yeah, he's going to tug on like her, her <coughs> arm. Uh, uh, excuse me. There is no touching without consent. So, sorry, sorry. I was, uh, my, 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 I'm still getting the whole interaction thing down. I, uh, I can tell. What can I help you with? Can, can, can I be far, part of friendship mode next time? I believe you were. <gasps> your your staff and your treat helped quite a bit. Ah, friendship mode. Yes, everybody should have a friendship mode. Okay, Reginald, come on. And I will follow uh, Virian and the, the puppy downstairs. And I'd like to just casually pass by the window that got broken and mend. And, you know, here's a here's a beam that got a little broken. Mend. It's just very <laughs> calmly reaching out and touching things in kind of a, a, a very pompous way. Like, mm, I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to fix this. there and... Mm. I like it. Come up, come up to the bar, and is, is Evie there? Uh, Evie, speaking of Evie, also, by the way, is Tulula for a uh, hire for, you know, house maintenance stuff? Because <laughs> <laughs> that well, sounds I, right handy. <laughs> my rates are very reasonable, but I usually do things um, more important than fixing windows. But here I am. I thought I would lend a, a hand. I yes, love it. Does... So as, as you're doing that, you actually hear someone saying, um, excuse me, Miss Tulula. I will turn Pardon around. Me? Yeah, hi, Evie. Remember me from last night? I got you that really nice suite in the corner room with that nice view out into the pond area and the garden. It was very nice. It was very appropriate for my station. So thank you very much. Uh, Evie, is this situation with Beauregard, is that a normal thing? Does that happen often? Oh, yeah. That I mean, a little poor little Beauregard. When we brought him in, I mean, the poor fellow, he was basically found outside up on his lonesomeness and he's been so skittish ever since. I mean, Sebastian does his very best to keep him out front and to keep him calm and collected, but little scamper dude just did his thing and he ran right in after someone came in to join us here at, you know, the bar area. And suddenly before I knew it, there he was just sitting there at the bottom of the stairs and then someone sneezed. And the next thing you know, he's shaking him like, like he does like right before, well, you saw what happens because that's what he does when that happens. But that's when I made sure to call up BB and let BB know what was going to happen because when BB this happens, BB doesn't like that when it happens. Anyways, I want to say thank you to you and your friends. Do you think, um, you think you have a moment? Well, if you would pause for a moment to breathe, I, I'm pretty sure that we can find the time. Um, so what what kind of dog does that? Beauregard. Has that Beauregard very... done this recently? Um, come to think about it, uh, he's been doing really darn well until like, oh, about a month ago. And then this started back up again. Yeah. Does this correlate in any way to the, some folks disappearing oh that's right bb brought you in here for that one um tell you what why don't we do the whole two birds one stone thing if you want to come back with me i want to make sure i get you your thank yous and um i can give you a little bit more information if you think it might help you with your investigation i believe as much information would be helpful as possible you know just in case we end up with another beauregard situation all right, okay. everybody, come on. We're going to learn more. Lovely. Well, follow me this way. See, I have this thing. It's, it's this little box of stuff. I mean, it's my lost and looking box. And I think it'd be a great thing for you to take a look at. And, um, you know, whatever you find there, just consider it my thank you to you for helping me out my little bow regard. Uh, as we're walking on over, I'm just going to casually cast detect magic. And I would like to, you know, look around, look, or look around everywhere in this <gasps> place, but then also in the box of stuff she's offering us. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, this place basically lights up for you. You're seeing pretty much everything except for, uh, well, maybe like a touch of divination. There's really not any necromancy floating around here, but uh, the rest is definitely present. Mm -hmm. 
in babies. Not, not a surprise. And the box that we've been presented with, with stuff. The box, the box itself, as Evie goes underneath the countertop and she pulls out this box and it says written on the side, lost and looking and no G mind you just looking. And she pops this box on the top of the counter and the box itself is mundane. There's nothing going on with it. Uh, but you know, you, again, you're getting some more pings coming off from things inside the box more than anything else. Are the rest of you nearby? Have you followed me as I've imperiously told you to follow me? Yes. <laughs> like really just, casual like feeding the about dog. It, yeah. You you look you turn around and Garlock standing behind you with a big smile and there's like dog drool coming off of the staff. <laughs> <laughs> oh good, you retrieved your chew toy. Excellent. Um would everybody take a look at these and I would like to start pulling anything that has oh, a oh, magic wait, wait. Hold on, like everyone's got to take a turn here, Tallulah. I mean, I'm I'm right uh, excited that you're you're pleased to take a look, because not everyone likes to look into this lost and looking box. But um, you know, I just need to make sure that uh, uh, well, what do you feel like finding? Do you want something that's more like an accessory, or do you want something that's more like a fun little object? Or yeah, I kind of like to know your intentions first. So basically, what I need from you, Lauren, is let me know if you want something that's more magic item related or if you like something that is more like um, adventuring gear. Oh, okay. I, I thought this was like literal lost and found and this was going to be clues and stuff. And I was going to be like, all right, here's a magic item. You know, tell me what this all does. Um, I'll, I'll take a magic item, sure. Okay, so then if you could please roll me a d10. D10. All oh, that would be a three. Okay, so... As your hand goes into this box and Eve is explaining, you gotta kind of think about what you intend or want to find. Um, you feel your hand touch this slender yet slightly long object. And as you bring it up, you have pulled out this etched mother of pearl flask. And it's quite elegant and quite beautiful, very well made. Um, it's basically a decanter of endless water. Oh. Cute, very, very, very cute. And I'll tuck it away, looking slightly disappointed and then move out of the way for everybody else. I mean, it keeps you hydrated. Hydration is very key, you know. You, you should be hydrating like, you know, I was told you're supposed to drink two liters a day, but sometimes I think two liters is a bit much, especially when you have to stand behind a desk and there are sometimes you cannot get a break. And you know when you really need that break? I mean, that break is sometimes really critical and sometimes you can't get that break. So I've kind of tapered back to 1.5 liters and I found that's been a nice sweet spot. If I need to, I'll make sure to drink like another 0.5 before I go to bed. Anyways, who's next? Uh, slightly dazed and confused. Uh, Can someone kind of like slow on here for a bit? <laughs> 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 Garlock puts up his hand. Frankly, I appreciate the brevity. <laughs> so, Garlock, what would you like to aim more for in your intentions? Adventure gear or something magical? Uh, Garlock stands there and strikes a pose. He's like, the magical Garlock would like a magical thing of magicalness from the magical box? Yeah. Lost like and looking. Magical lost and looking. <laughs> so again, D10. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Seven. A seven. So that is going to get you. Um, you feel your finger hook onto this chain. And as you lift it up, you see this fire opal pendant necklace dangle the pendant dangling off the end of this gold chain. Um, and basically, this is uh <laughs> I did this to myself, a necklace of fireballs. <laughs> so Garlock pulls out the <gasps> necklace and you just hear him go. <laughs> I see the I see the evocation magic wafting off of that, and I just take mm -hmm. another step back. Just you guys, casually. you guys, I just used my last one of these, <laughs> and you literally have one on there. Varian, we're gonna it. die. We're gonna die. <laughs> I, I your, believe I'm I believe Varian is die. already dead. <laughs> half, half dead. He's I just kind of look at like, alive. Oh, I I died a long time ago. Uh, like, girl, girl like puts on the necklace and just. <laughs> okay, we're gonna put a pin in that one. Which the, 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 the necklace or the being dead a long time? Oh, uh, I was I mean the goblin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good luck with that. Um, as long as he's got that necklace. W would you like a trip to the box? Good garlock. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm always a good garlock. Is that? Uh, take something from the lost and looking uh something magical as well perhaps 
I don't I don't need a necklace. I can cast fireball on my own. I don't need magical items to do that. Some of us okay. do need help. Okay. Well that then, one over um, there. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. All right. So um let's see what you find in there, darling. And I just need you to give me a D10 roll, Todd. And while Todd's looking, don't forget, we have some really cool things in game that you can find today because we have Lucy, who is now available. You also have the polymorph Yorvin and Minsk, Minsk skins. I don't know why, like putting those two words together, it's Minsk. Minsk. <laughs> Minsk. Um, and you can also get the Prismir Shandy and the Prismir Sentry, Sh- as well as the uh, Shandy Fan fami- Fairy Familiar. So there's there's so many cool things in the game right now. So when you're done watching this game, go into the other game, Idol Champions, and check it out. Meanwhile, Todd, what did you roll? I got a three. You got a three. Okay. So as you <laughs> stick your hand in there, uh, you actually feel this very thick. It's not quite a chain, but it feels metallic. But it's, you know, got a little weight to it. And as you lift it up, you see that you've pulled out this pocket watch. And I need you to roll me another, or a D6 for this one. Jeez, uh, one. Okay, so you have basically pulled out a pocket watch that is essentially an amulet of stamina. I don't really need this, but uh, <laughs> yep, I'll just hold on to it for now. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, you're looking and it's lost, and now you have it, so it's yours. Pocket watch. You want the pawn shop in town? I can get you the number. No, no, this is fine. I don't know what, uh, I, I don't know what kind of shop sells only pawns. That's hard to play chess um uh it, it very in maybe you will get a big blood bag or um you know or a bunny which is really oh. just a big blood bag when you think about it wrapped yeah. in fur evie kind of takes a step back at the idea of bunny blood bags just like herringen don't taste that good you know out and of I re- all the group- i reach and then um, at that point i just reach into the bag looking for a magic item evie writes a note down Keep him away from Yorvin. He's in the kitchen. <laughs> she what? writes this note down to herself. As he reaches in, Carla goes, you know, out of all the groups I've hung out with, y'all are the most disturbing. <laughs> so I'll what's your D10 mind. there, Dylan? Uh, all righty. A what? That's an eight. An eight. Okay. So um, you pop your hand in there and you feel this very soft, lightweight object brush across across your knuckles and as you lift it out you have this lovely filigree feather pen and you have essentially pulled out what is going to act as a ring of feather falling hmm. so that is that is everything so as you pull that out Evie goes oh that's a good one I was carrying that one down the stairs and I failed but I didn't fall that was great but anyways, thank you so much again for your help with Beauregard. Now she's saying that she's like closing up the box and she's tucking it back under the countertop. At Fair is Fair, you said you wanted some more information. And, you know, I, I basically welcome everybody here and I take down their names and I take down how long they're staying. and I make sure I take care of their bills and I make sure I go upstairs and check their rooms and they have everything they need. So basically, I have a lot of information. What do you need? Did the, the swelling of the puppy correlate to any of the disappearances? Did I mean, Beauregard's always done this up and down fluctuation thing. He has been a bit more agitated over the past month, but people haven't gone missing until like about a week or so ago it started. And he's been doing this for at least a month. Are you looking for a connection? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to which the bodies are Beauregard. Either. Or the missing somebody's yeah. not the bodies. We don't I'm know. I'm not really oh, good at investigating things. Mainly, someone's like, "Kill that thing," and I'm like, "Okay, I love doing that. That's my favorite thing." You and Sebastian would get along famously, quite frankly. But then there was a puppy, and then I thought people would judge me for melting it slowly over time. <laughs> yeah, I definitely would. See, I think judgment. <laughs> so, uh, well- can someone else investigate? Because I, I'm all ideas. I thought the puppy maybe expanded murdered a bunch of people and then they hid the bodies because they like I mean, the puppy so much he's, he's mostly a vegetarian well maybe just squished them maybe um 
while you continue down this very fascinating line of questioning, which I, I agree is good to cover all of our bases, you say you take pretty good records when people come in and out of this place? Yeah, of course. It's my job. I would love to see all the records on uh, Charlie, Missy, and Granny Ann. When they arrived, when they left, what they were doing, what they ate, if they were going to meet someone, whatever information you might have on those three. Okay. And she pulls out the register book and she slams it, not slams it, but it's a big, heavy book. So this large book, she flips it open and she turns to the page. She goes, they just all got here about the same time this week. And she plops it down in front of you. They all arrived here on Sunday. And then it looks like Charlie went out on Tuesday to go meet a friend in town. Um, but it was a busy night that night. Um, it was tap dance and Tuesday, you know, Eduardo had the whole thing going on the dance floor. So we had a lot of people coming in. So no one really noticed that he wasn't here. Oh, but then you asked about Missy. Missy was here. She was here at tap dance Tuesday. Uh, actually, I think she won. She got third prize. She did a really good job with that one. Uh, but Missy went missing on Thursday. Oh, that's kind of a neat. Never mind. I went inappropriate. Uh, and finally, Granny. Well, I think, well, we noticed she went missing. Oh, after we realized that Missy went missing. And when was that? Yesterday. And and that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What 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 day was yesterday? <laughs> oh, she, sorry, that was like Friday for her. You, okay. You're basically okay. here on a Saturday. Okay. And they were all leaving to go somewhere else, but then come back. Mm hmm. Missy went to go take a walk out in the gardens, um, but she wanted to make sure it was like a sundown type of thing, and she also grabbed like a nice little bottle of champagne before she went out. She said it tastes better under a sunset. She's absolutely correct. And oh, Missy? Shot. That was Missy. Oh, okay. So, and then Charlie, what, what Charlie, did he, he to went, go do? He went to go see a friend in town. And Granny? Uh, Granny just said she had business to do. Garlock hmm. raises his hand. <laughs> yes, Garlock. What time were the other? Did the other two people leave? Time a day. Yeah, you said the one of them was at sunset. When were the other ones? Oh, that's a good point. Well, Granny was like early morning yesterday. Mm -hmm. She likes to go out for her daily, like constitutional. She calls them. I was actually confused for a little bit. I thought she was riding a constitution. It turns out that's not what that is. No, that's what makes you healthy, like me. Okay. And, and Charlie, when did he leave? Uh, he was meeting his friend for lunch, so he left here around 11.30 on Tuesday. Hmm. Well, Gallic, it was a good idea, but that unfortunately did not pan out the way we thought. Um, oh, no one says that to me. What's the good idea that your ideas don't pan out? The, the first one. Ah, uh, they should say that to you more, dear. They really should. Especially if you're carrying around that necklace. Okay. Um, do you have any information on the rooms they were in? The stuff that they brought? Did well, they make any uh, calls while they were here? Any other information you might have in that I mean, book? And I'm kind of just eyeing the, the book of all the information that she's got. Well, the stuff that they brought. Um, well, I mean, and she's kind of eyeing down to the box that she just put up. I mean, I got most of their stuff and tucked it back into the closet after all. No big deal. Um, and um, in the rooms, we'll actually, well, each, well, except for you, and she po points to you, Torben, uh, you're in their rooms. Wait, Was that intentional? Like right now? <laughs> yeah, we clean it. Well, I mean, it's it's an establishment that has room and board in, and when the board is in demand and the rooms and all that stuff, you got to make sure that they're ready and available. You're all going to die. I plan on uh, fighting back whatever is about to kill me. So was that intentional then? No, it was just availability. Hmm. That feels, what's a, what's the word? Um, Coincidental. That I thought thing. it was ironic. Both, really. Um, the book that she's put down on the table mm -hmm. is that... Um, is that just a register or are there other information in there? 
it's basically just a registry of who checks in, when they check in, which room they've gotten, and when they've checked out type of situation. And any special requests that they want sent up to the room, anything that's been put onto their tab in terms of like, can you send up a room service or that type of thing, that has all been logged into the book. While the rest of you keep asking questions, uh, do you mind if I take a look at your book for a moment? You can look in the book, sure. And I'll slide it on over, turn it on around, and I would I would like to just hardcore investigate what what were people asking for, what was were there any other people who came in and out at the same time? I'm I want a Sherlock Holmes the this book. So since you're investigating this and Sherlock Holmesing it, I would like an investigation check. Awesome, I can do that. Okay, is anyone helping Tula out by uh, keeping um, Evie distracted, or I, I will I will help with the investigation. Um, okay, that's great. I'm proficient, so. Okay, excellent. Uh, so, uh, 21. 21. Yes. Torvin, you have a question? Or? Uh, no, I like, Garlock, uh, tell me all about your life. Well, how did it start? Um, well, it started dark. Can you say it louder so that uh, our, our uh, host can hear? Oh, right, right. Okay. It started dark yes. because I couldn't see. The darkness, yes. More. And then... Um, <laughs> um, then I joined a gang. Uh-huh. But they beat me up a lot. That's sad. And Isn't then, that sad? And then <sighs> adventurers came and didn't kill me. So that was fun. <laughs> they became my friends. They were my first friends, because the other friends tried to beat me up. Sorry, the other friends tried to beat me up! <laughs> I'm just trying to get Garlock to... Can, like, <laughs> pull focus. <laughs> That's yeah, what I Evie's... found out. I was a wizard and became friends with an oh, owl bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna, uh, with I'm Evie's holding my nine. hand over Beauregard's ears for this. <laughs> yeah, so he's kind of like <laughs> he like clumps in against you. You, you kind of hear like a slight whimper, but no shaking is happening yet, so it's okay. But Evie, with her nine, she's she's engrossed in this life story about her. Like, uh huh. Well, that's fascinating. I'm like, you know, everyone, yeah, uh huh, uh huh. And all oh, those adventures. Sometimes I tell. So she will be participating. And with the twenty one, um, you do notice as you start flipping through the pages, um, Tallulah, that so far things seem pretty normal until you get to about a month back. You see, um, someone has continued to ask for. Warm bowls of swamp water. Every single morning, they want fresh bowls of warm swamp water delivered to their room. And who would that person be? Their name is Hopfrey. Halt free? Hop free. Hop, hop free. Ah, mm -hmm. ah. We have title, everybody. <laughs> and garlic, then your, your second marriage after that. What happened? What? No, no, no. <laughs> marriage? Did my, do you know more about me than I do? <laughs> No. <laughs> um, while the life story continues, uh, I'm not even going to bother trying to ask Evie. I've got the entire book here. Um, how long has Hopfrey been here? Where is is Hopfrey still staying in the in the inn? Can I get all of Hopfrey's information? <clears throat> so basically, you see that Hopfrey had stayed there for about four days, checked out on the last day clean checkout. There were no other notes or anything untoward. You do notice that there are big question marks written to the three people whose names went missing uh, oh. in Evie's note system. Uh, but no, Hopfrey was there for about three and a half days, almost four, and wanted that warm swamp water every morning and then checked out, actually checked out earlier than normal too. And what room was Hopfrey staying in those three days? Hopfrey was in room 10. Okay. Is that one of the rooms of the missing people? No. Ah. Is it near one of the rooms of the <laughs> missing people? <laughs> missing people. Um, it is actually, if you were looking at the layout of the rooms, room 10 is actually offside of BB's. So it's actually not that far away from where BB's is. I'm going to turn to uh, Virian, who is, is probably the only person not distracted by the, the life story. Do you happen to know why someone would want warm swamp water? What is that all about? Any ideas? I mean, would I? <laughs> um, are you saying this softly, Jalila, or more audibly? Um, I mean, Garlock's pretty loud, so... I... My hearing's acute. I can just lean. 
I'm not okay. I'm not announcing this, but I'm not trying to be subtle. Okay, how so tall then, are you, Garlock? <laughs> so, Garlock, I'd like you to give me a performance check with uh, advantage because you have Torvid helping. <laughs> Oh, and boy. deception from De- Tallulah. Oh, okay. Uh, I got a, a, oh. I forgot that I had stuff to add to it. I have a 19 for performance. Ooh. That's quite respectable. Tallulah? Uh, I rolled a 15, so I have a 13. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand why Is there a way for to... me to help with this lie? Because I am also very proficient in deception. <laughs> Okay, so um, if it's if Torvin, if you're or uh, sorry, uh, Virian, if you kind of lean closer, just to sort of like block any type of lip reading type of thing happening there, sure. I'll if you want to roll it again. Sure. <laughs> while, while she's doing that, girl is like, and that's when we put the stuffed mind flare in the foyer of the tavern. <laughs> Tallulah has this moment in where she just does not understand why we're trying to keep any of this information secret. It's just. She, of course, she knows that we're trying to find information. We're getting all of this information. And something about the way that Virian leans on in and uh, exudes this aura of let's just keep this on the down low helped me roll a natural 20 for an 18. Okay. So, yeah, she won't pick up on the fact that you have locked on to Hop Free for any reason whatsoever. Um, oh, well, that just sounds like poor decorating choices there. But to each their own. I mean, if it makes your, your place a home, then... Um, would you want to say more power to them? I'd be afraid of someone who has a mind player like on display. I mean, that just seems like, mm. anyways, did you find anything that would help you out there, Miss Tallulah? Well, so I was leaning into Virian because we were trying to decide, figure out if we knew why warm bowls of swamp water, what anyone could use that for. <laughs> Virian, do you happen to know anything about warm bowls of swamp water? That's not something I usually order. Uh, I don't know if I would know that. Uh, I have expertise uh, in history. Yeah, sure. Give me a history check. Right. It's gross. Eight, 18. <laughs> 18. So, Virian, you would know that people who get specific types of water, uh, it might be something involving aquatic life of some sort, especially if it's a pet. Mm. I just, I just kind of like nod and then I turn to Evie and I'm like, oh, and I just kind of hand Beauregard to her. Oh. Thank you very much. And she kind of just and immediately pressed the digitation, all the dog hair off me and everything. Just like, <laughs> and then I, nice. I, I, I walk away. Love it. Did you find everything you were looking for? Anything that might help? Virian, did you say any of that out loud? Any of the information that you learned? Are you muted? Yeah. Yeah, I did that right <laughs> after. I do that when I finish talking in case I sneeze because my allergies are acting mm, up. Oh, um, fair. Uh, yeah, I hand over Beauregard and I just kind of turn and indicate to head towards the stairs and I just I start walking away. Uh, then I'll look at Evie and say, well, we're still in the process of investigating. We got a little distracted by Beauregard. Um, uh, fellas, if you are done telling your story, I think we have something to check out and I will follow. Ah, I was just getting to the part that I saved water deep. Okay. Hey, hey, tell me about the garlock. Garlock, tell me about Waterdeep as we head down these stairs and uh, have learned nothing. I, yeah, I, it, Gar- Garlock will regale you with everything he knows about uh, Waterdeep, which is literally just one tavern in Waterdeep. Is the, is the water deep there? I don't know. I haven't been thrown in it yet. Okay. Um, do we know yes. who we're killing yet? Because I feel useless. And I know it's not all about me, but... But you want to feel useful. No, I understand, dear. Yeah, We're still working on it. I want to melt something. It. I want to melt someone. And then that's you... how... I mean, maybe I'm insecure. But when I melt someone, I feel better inside. <laughs> that's good to know. As soon as we have someone for you to melt, I will absolutely point them out to you. Like, Do we have a name? Maybe, maybe there's a high chance of melting them? We're still. I, I, in, I would hate to give you a name and have it be the wrong name, and then you melt the wrong person. And how bad would we feel if you know you melted the wrong person? Yeah, I'd feel better, but yeah, no, okay, yeah, we'll see. We'll do it your way. Thank you. My way is usually better, and I'll keep walking. That that was arrogant. <laughs> when we that? when we get to the top of the stairs, uh, 
uh, I'll, I'll just uh, just turn. And when Torben gets up there, I'm like, we need to break into room 10. Oh, okay. I'll go get that. <laughs> I start looking for room 10. <laughs> okay. Luckily for you, the rooms are numbered on the doors. One. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I get to 10. Okay. So you're you're at room 10 and is in a corner room. It's you can tell it's one of the smaller rooms uh, based on how the doors are a little bit closer together. You try to break into the room. I jiggle the knob. Jiggle the knob. Okay. It's actually unlocked. Garlock, I picked a lock. <laughs> Good a job, buddy. <laughs> Excellent. I did not feel like fighting a door today. One never does. <laughs> On I this, just, we agree. I kick the door open. Ha! Okay. I draw a munchkin card. What no do my... <laughs> I was just gonna say, what do my sorcerer eyes see? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as you kick this door open, it is basically a very simple room. There is a twin bed. There is a side table with a lamp and then a three-drawer dresser tucked underneath the window. And that's really all that's in this room. I still have to take magic up because uh, it's 10 minutes. Do anything ping in here? Uh, nothing outside of what you've been noticing as general, what BB probably has going just to kind of make the establishment more whimsical and comfortable for everyone. Mm. I look at you, wizard. I am. Oh, I thought you were like a rogue. No, the, the, the hat. It's a wizard hat. This isn't a rogue hat. Oh, I thought it was a sneaky thing. This would be terrible for sneaking. I know, I tried and they caught me. I don't want to make assumptions, but swamp water. There it was, there it was. <laughs> Have you smelt it or tasted it before? Actually, you know? no, and I'm even shocked at that. <laughs> okay, so I don't feel so bad now. Huh. Okay. Should I have? Should I drink swamp water? Torvin, have you had experience with swamp water? I've never been near a swamp. I don't know what one is. That's sad. It's very sad. They're very beautiful places. Would I happen to know what kind of life would live in a swamp that would need a bowl of warm swamp water every morning? Uh, why don't you give me a history? Swamp kitty. Or at or nature. Nature will also work in this case. Oh, definitely history with a 26. Okay. With a 26, um, you would realize things where terrarium-like based uh, creatures, so salamanders, frogs, uh, tadpoles especially, would need, you know, fresh swamp water if this because there's not like filters or anything happening at this point. Uh, maybe some sort of fish might also be an option for someone who's a little bit more fastidious or wanting to make sure it is more comfortable for the creature. But basically, smaller pets of like salamanders, frogs, turtles, and fish. Is this one of those situations where they they ended up with a reptile they didn't like and flushed it down the toilet, and now there's like an alligator that just lives here eating people? Is this Lauren speaking or Tallulah speaking? Um, Tallulah is going to say that eventually, but this is Lauren speaking to try to get it out because that's the first thing I'm thinking is someone decided to dump a, an alligator down into the toilet and now people are just getting eaten by the wildlife. Tallulah will say something to that extent, except it doesn't have anything to do with alligators in Florida, man. I cover Garlock's ears right here. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> Despite the fact that I, I know that I'm not talking about Garlock, I go, I just try to get things out as quickly as possible. He's a big boy. He can handle it. Anyway. Uh, you know what's weird? His hands too, felt but comforting. I made myself sick uh, in down in there. Never mind. You don't want to know that. Yeah, my hands are comforting. Thank you, Garlock. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, that's disappointing. I was expecting you to shrink when you got a compliment. I'm going to investigate this room. <laughs> I was uh, waiting. Todd's well. going to take a hard pass on that one. Uh, <laughs> Drat. Okay. So as you are investigating this room, uh, what do you get? Give me an investigation. 
Nine. Uh, a nine. Yeah, a nine. So, except, so you see my muscles. <laughs> uh, Reginald is going to trot on over to you and follow you around and is going to help. Because, Garlock you know, got a three. Uh, with with okay. his very, very good nose. And it's his because my hands are in your ears. <laughs> All righty. Yeah. Second roll. 21. 21. Um, so you're investigating this room and it's been cleaned. It's been taken care of. There's really nothing too significant left behind. Uh, but as you're all looking, you hear a voice go, <clears throat> um, excuse me. I, I was told that I needed to make sure the bed was turned down for the guests coming tonight. Would y'all mind clearing out? And you see this little young lady probably no more than about 18 with her bright red hair pulled back into a very tight bun. And she's got a little cap on her head and an apron over her simple black dress. And you see, she is holding a dust feather duster and a mop in her hand. And she has a couple linens tucked underneath her arm. When you say you want to turn down the room, specifically the creature, who are you going to turn down for what? The bed. Oh. <laughs> Can I yes. help you with something? Yes. yes. Do you have swamp water on you by chance? <laughs> I really don't want to do that again. Are you kidding me? We just got rid of that one fellow who kept wanting the water brought up every morning. And I got to tell you, I don't like going into the swamp that early in the day. You never know what could be in those waters. And that's when those critters are hungry. Was he like scaly? Or did he smell like fish or like a lobster man or I mean, had tentacles? She puts the stuff down on the dresser and she kind of like sighs and she puts the linens on the bed and she sits down and she's like, I really don't like to speak, you know, poorly of our patrons. Oh, I'm Maggie, by the way. Very nice to meet you. Um, I, will, I hate speaking badly of patrons. Um, it's not nice. And, it's, you know, it could well, if it got out, it might risk me my job. But, oh, oh. But there it is. Good. Okay. I mean, he was an odd little fellow. And she kind of looks over to Garlock. Kind of like, well, can you put your ears down, honey? Uh, like like this? And just fold his ears down. See, kind of like this, but smaller eyes and a bigger grin without so much teeth. Kind of like that type of build. Um... You know, green skin, kind of look, must have moisturized the bejesus out of his skin. I will say that. But yeah, his whole thing was he wanted me to bring up this swamp water every morning and it had to be a certain temperature and I had to make sure it didn't have too much of this or not enough of that. And very, very, very much like, you know, bring it up at this exact time and it's of the most importance and make sure you clean out the bowl. And I mean, tip me nicely enough so i didn't say boo to anyone else about it about it being you know a bother but yeah that um it was uh hot free was the fellow's name um oh, look i appreciate you holding your ears down this entire time but um, I you the, the yeah, honey, the wizard hat sl has slowly dripped down <laughs> over his eyes can, can you show us on the garlock uh what it looked like and i just squeeze his ears down with garlock's permission like with the eyes bigger, and if she says yes, I push his eyes open. No, they were like smaller and like more uh, wide set. Squeeze his eyes down, longer face. <laughs> no. Um. Was he like a frog person? There you go. Yeah, kind of had like that toady appearance type of thing happening. I just pull your cheeks, scar like all the way out, like. Do we have, right do we have um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, glowing red rainbow eyes? Whoa, 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 like the one like this? <laughs> no. Yep, no, no they lock. were just beady black eyes. I saw one of those once and uh, uh, I peed myself and a year went by. It was rough. That sounds unfortunate. It was a tough time. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for a frog person who likes swamp water. Well, I mean, if that's piqued your attention, then yeah, sure. But Hopfrey left um, a little while ago. Oh, his name's Hopford. Hopfrey. Hopfrey. Mm -hmm. That's funny. <laughs> what? 
you you said he was a, a, a frog person. Was he like our friend Garlock here? This the same wonderful shade of green. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Kind did of he happen, croaky voice. Did he happen to mention where he was going, what he was doing, why he needed all these very specific swamp water requests? Said he was trying to find the perfect swamp environment, that it, he was a connoisseur of the perfect um, getaway, which, again, to each their own, if that's his idea of a great vacation spot, then so be it. The last bowl of swamp water that you so kindly brought, where did you <laughs> retrieve it from? Old Jeb's Grotto. Uh, could you give me some directions on where that is? Oh, sure. Not a problem. If you go out the back kitchen area, just tell Cal that I sent you. He won't give you no fuss over it. Just go out the back door and follow the path and just make sure you follow the path. Um, don't take the left hand fork. Go to the right and it'll take you right there. It's about a 10 minute walk or so. I guess I'm taking a walk. Would anybody like to join me in seeing if Hopfrey has a new home? I like walking. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. I feel spry. <sighs> Please enjoy your, your spry run. I will meet you there. I'm going to saunter, like I always do. Come, Garlock. We shall walk together. Yeah. I, I, stretch, I'm, I stretch my legs. And At I, this I, point. I, I, I tear off my pants <laughs> for the shorts. <laughs> so it's just, just really You're ripped. You're in a whole new light here. Okay. Not mending that for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Luna. As, as, as you all leave, you realize that I actually wasn't in the room with you, and I'm just coming out of the room that I'm staying in, putting on a jacket, like a mm -hmm. long coat. Uh, uh, <laughs> and this coat looks centuries older than the uh, the jeans and a shirt that I was wearing earlier, and I'm just like, are we ready to go? Yes, I believe we have got a lead, possibly. Shall we? Excellent. I imagine that I'm so busy getting ready and uh, stretching that we all get there at the same time, even though I, yeah, I was going to say you gave him a head start. Um, so you would make your way through the kitchen to get out to this path. And as you walk through the kitchen, you see this um, fellow kind of turn over and look over at you. And he's got this long extended snout and these very sharp teeth. And he's waving a little ladle around. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, this, the kitchen. Now you can't just come in here cause you want to this, you know, this, this is my kitchen. I got to make sure the dinners and the meals are getting prepared. What do you think you're doing in here? <laughs> Garlock puts up a hand to, to, to Tallulah and walks over and just saddles up like it, like he's like in manager mode and just says, Evie said we were cool. Go on ahead. That's show. That's fine. See, I still and, got the manager uh, thing. This alligator folk, oh. he turns back around and he's stirring his jambalaya pot and he's got the broth going and everything like that. And so you'll all make your way down the path and uh, you get to a fork in the road of the path. Which way do you go? To the right. To the right, good, you're listening. And as you make your way through, you start getting out of what is a less manicured garden area into this more natural wildlife preserve. Uh, you see that natural flora and fauna have been let to take over and you hear these crickets in the background and the drone of insects and these birds calling up high in the trees and the trees have actually grown over each other. So it's actually a little bit darker. Uh, you don't have the sunlight coming through completely. It filters through every so often when the canopy is more sparse. It's humid. Uh, you definitely are in more of this swamp-like environment. And as you walk in what the path is directing you towards, the sound of frogs is definitely getting louder. And what would your marching order be at this point? Who would be going first? Me, because I am a muscle sorcerer. Okay. And <laughs> I'm behind Tallulah wherever she is. Okay. That makes me just think of uh, Flex Mentallo from uh, Doom Patrol. I don't know if you've watched that, Todd. I've not, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You missed out. <laughs> I believe the fireball went that way. <laughs> Gar Garlock, you're a small creature, correct? Yes. Uh, as we're making this walk, um, I will look over at my my corgi that happens to be a medium-sized construct because corgis are better when they're bigger. And I say, oh, it's Reginald, go, go offer your assistance. And Reginald is going to trot up to you and offer to let you ride him. Garlic will immediately. Well, uh, actually, first he goes, thank, thank, thank you, thank you. And then he gets on the bed and goes, this is the best day 
ever. <laughs> and as you're screaming, this is the best day ever. You hear this. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, but who goes there? I beg your pardon? Actually, I don't beg your pardon. I really don't care. Um, I never beg. So, you know. I was pardoned once. I refuse to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this this sound coming from? You see, you see, you hear this sound coming from this collection of palm fronds that have sort of fanned over and woven into each other, but you see that it's shaking from where this voice is coming. Um, uh, as Rupert flies off my horn to go take a look, I'm going to call mm -hmm. out, and, and who would you be demanding to know who we are? And you see these palms open wide as this <laughs> this bullywug steps forward proudly, spear in hand, goes like this with his free hand. Tis I, Sir Hopfrey, and you trespass upon the Great One's lands. Well, did you have a sign up saying that this was his lands? Her lands, madam, and no. My apologies about the, the her, but... If you don't mock your territory, how are you to know that we are trespassing? By the frogs. That is hardly appropriate. Um, what do you usually do with trespassers on your land? You have two options. Bring tribute to the great one. Or prepare to battle. And he hefts his spear and points it proudly. Waiting for your reply. I cast Firewall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my That's god, cool. someone beat me to it. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna roll initiative then. <laughs> Carlock's never been beaten to a fireball. <laughs> wow, my initiative rolls are just the worst. No! It's... Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, did... I got a 13. Okay. Am I first? If I, I don't. Corbin with a thirteen. Well, you did not take this fellow by surprise. Ah, oh, I got a sixteen. Okay. And I got a three. 16. Tallulah. Listen, and I'm trying Garlock, to think. I got a nine. A nine. Okay, and then Hopfrey. Hopfrey did not do so well. Okay, Hopfrey is going to go before Tallulah, but after Garlock. So we have. Virian, Torvin, Garlock, Opfrey, and Tallula in that order. So starting with you, Virian, what would you do as you see Hopfrey pull his spear and say tribute or battle? Uh, I, having listened to Torvin so far all day, uh, I, I'm acutely aware that as soon as that spear came out, that was probably it. Mm -hmm. So I have taken a few steps back and uh, I've kind of like unslung my loot and I'm just going to cast invisibility on myself. Cool. All right. So invisible, that takes us then to uh, Torvin. What do you do? I cast fireball. You cast, you absolutely cast. I felt cast, like okay. I was clear. <laughs> then cast it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to burn this frog. I don't like Big huh? Frog Man. So mm -hmm. uh, saving throw is 14. I, okay. I'm, very, I'm very impressed. I really thought you were going to melt someone and you're setting someone on fire. That's very innovative. Well, I was going, to, Dex, I right? was going to melt, but I thought he might be uh, melt uh, resistant. I don't know. It, it's a deck save, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, it one? is. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So he's got a dirty 20. Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, half of 27. Half of 27. Okay. I, hope, I hope I get a bunch of his frog buddies that are corrupt. All right. With half of 27, this fireball, what does it look like as you basically uh, fricassee Sir Hopfrey? I just... Just... <laughs> <laughs> my mic. And cast fireball. Okay. And so as Sir Hopfrey stands there proudly ready for battle and this fireball lands upon them, all that's left is sort of these charred bits of what once was Sir Hopfrey. 
Do you relent? Oh, very nice. I don't care. I quicken spell. <laughs> I'm going to cast Mind Sliver. It's an intelligence mm-hmm. saving throw. Against whom? Against uh, the Frogman. Frogman's gone with the fireball. Oh, oh he's gone, gone. <laughs> yeah, oh. you killed him. Oh, God. Very nice. I, I, shoot one at one, so I shoot at a tree. <laughs> I think Garlock's going to stare in that direction. And <laughs> in the middle of a second of a sentence, a frog croaks. He goes, holy rabbit. <laughs> Actually, as you say holy, you hear. And oh, then. Is it big oh, one? no. <laughs> Darwin, do you have a bigger fireball? I do. Excellent. Please prepare that. And um, <laughs> as you are all still, we'll keep you in initiative because as you hear this brop and the ground starts to shake, you see coming out of the same area where Hopfrey had once stood, <laughs> is no longer there, in this charred circle area. I'm sorry, you he see croaked. He, he absolutely croaked without question. Uh, you see what is the cause for this newer, deeper croak come out in front of you. And the first thing you see are these tentacles almost pulling the figure further forward. And they're green and they've got this slimy thing going on with them. And then you see this large body pull forward as well and this very large froggy mouth. And then on top of the head, you see these three eye stalks closely clustered together as the additional two tentacles come whipping out and pose themselves in front of you and you hear another calling out and you'll notice that at the top of the head, there's a slightly askew crown sitting atop of the head of this creature. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Which then will take us to- King Croak, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> oh well let's see here so that gives us two Tallulah I believe oh wait no Garlock sorry Garlock because Garlock uh, got a nine screw him up Garlock you got this yeah I mean yeah. Is, is there anyone you just hear me whisper behind you fireball <laughs> first is there anyone near the 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 big Go old hand to hand <laughs> is there anyone near it yeah like are uh, you near it or is it is it on its own you were probably oh, there's no one else around it. It's okay. just this large hulking form that has come out. So, so Garlock, uh, here's, uh, here's the, uh, here's him say fireball. And he goes, now that's weird. Usually the voice in my head goes fireball, and he throws fireball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so new one. So they get. Okay, they get a nine. Okay, that does not beat the 15 deck save. No, um, it does not. So tell me what the damage is going to be gonna here. It's going to roll and eat me beyond. It's fun that way. Oh, mm-hmm. God, that was so loud. <laughs> <laughs> 32 damage. 32. That is a beautiful number. So 32 oh. damage goes flying towards this creature. And you see that it definitely does take some damage. However, maybe not quite as much as you had hoped. But still, there is some singeing that is starting to happen on the front tentacles, let's say. And then Garlock would like to move away. <laughs> <laughs> Garlock would like to flee. Okay. Uh, you've got this. You don't need to back up. <laughs> from, is there anything else? From the that, distance uh, in the forest, you hear, I know, you're, uh, I'm good back here. <laughs> okay. So you're about 20 feet away as it is. How much farther I'll, back? I'll, do I'll you just want? move back 30 feet. 30 feet. Okay, so that gives me some context there. Uh, that will then bring us to you, Tallulah, since uh, Sir Hopfrey has fallen out of initiative for reasons. Excellent. <laughs> okay, Reginald, we're going into battle mode, please. And as uh, Reginald will trot on up to this creature, Tallulah reaches into a pocket and pulls out a deck of cards, flips yeah. it open. She's going to reach in at random, pull out a card. Uh, and the card she pulls? Well, deck one or deck two? I have a random Let's go with card deck puller. One. Let's do deck one. Deck one. Let's see what we get. Jack of diamonds. Mm. Uh, Jack of diamonds. Ooh, I flick the card into the air. It does that awesome thing the card trick people do where it spins around and kind of curves because I can throw it within 30 feet of me. And I'm going to throw it so that it lands kind of a little to the side and behind this creature. 
and uh, an assassin appears. Ooh. Looks incredibly menacing. Okay. And does the assassin get to do anything on your turn? Uh, look incredibly menacing. Look, that is the operative word. Look. Okay, anything else that Tulula would like to do? Um, let's see. That was my action. Uh, well, you know, I put Reginald into battle mode. So as a bonus action, I'm going to go, oh, bite, bite, Reginald, bite. Um, yep. And so Reginald is going to make a... Uh, force empowered rend attack. Yep. Oh, Reginald is going to miss Reginald. Oh, he rolls a two. Yes. Listen, we're going to have to fix that servo a little bit later. Okay, keep 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 your chin up. Next time. Okay. And that's what I got. Uh, if when it's when it's the frog's turn, I can go over what happens when it tries to go after the assassin if it does. Okay, great to know. So it is now this creature's turn, and as it uh, looks towards the four of you, it actually will focus on you, Carlock, <laughs> since you heard hurl that fireball at it. Um, so let me see here. Oh, but you're so it'll look at you first, and then it'll swing its head around and look to you, Torvin. I told you not to taunt it. <laughs> <laughs> and as it looks at you. Um, this long tongue falls out of its mouth and it begins to sway back and forth like a pendulum of a clock. And its three eyes suddenly start to take on these odd shapes in its pupil as they change forms from, you know, triangles to squares to plus signs to minus signs. And it's different each one of these things. And uh, it tries to put you into a hypnotic trance there, Torvin. Uh, so you need to make a DC wisdom saving throw for me, please. No. That's a 12. What else do I got? I got, I can't reroll saving throws. So I think I just got a 12 for sorcerers. Okay. So with the- um, ability check. Now that's ability check. Now saving throw. So, okay. <clears throat> so straight up 12. Yep. So with this 12, you feel suddenly like, Oh, everything's fine. This creature's wonderful. This is so cool. Look at those four tentacles. That's a pretty neat way to move around. Why not? Kind of like the, you know, the back and forth. That's very soothing. Oh, and look at the, the eyes. And then suddenly you, you realize you're like, what am I doing? And you shake it off. You just make it. I had my tongue out and everything. Yeah. <laughs> or even like making it go back and forth with the. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gotta check. Um, so you do not fall under its hypnotic trance, luckily. Uh, Silly frogman, and- you have no power over me. <laughs> I was not going to kiss you. And that <laughs> is its turn for uh, this round and that brings us back up to the top then with uh virian oh okay um i will uh use my bonus action to cast hex on the creature okay um and the ability check that i will give it a disadvantage on from here on out is dexterity okay uh, and then I will uh, attack with some Eldritch Blasts. Ooh. That's that's what I got. Awesome. Um, so let's see what you get. So I got two of them. Yep. Uh, first roll is a 19 to hit. That hits. And then the second roll will be a 17 to hit. Both hit. Okay. So that's a d10 plus 1d6 plus 4 twice. So I'll roll the damage and then roll the d6s or... Yeah. So let's see. Eight plus nine is 17 plus 2d6. Uh, Plus another nine. So 26 force damage. Okay. Fantastic. So as these Eldritch Blasts strike two, what do they look like as they do some damage? I just kind of like rematerialize at the back cursing okay. it with one hand and then just just firing bolts of purple energy out of the other fantastic um, i guess it's a mix of uh, necrotic and uh, force actually but yeah. yeah 
All right, beautiful. Anything else you would like to do for your turn? Any movement or anything like that? Um, having just watched Torben Slackjaw staring at it, I'm gonna back up further. So I'm at like 60 feet away or more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why All right. Backing up. Now, Torben, we are back to you. I'm sorry, Frogman, and it would never worked out. I see that now. I saw you try to put your frog wiles on me, and uh, I can't allow that. I cast T Tasha's Mind Whip. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, dear. Always demand consent first. An intelligence saving throw. Mm -hmm. uh, if it fails, it takes psychic damage and then it can't use its reaction to the end of its next turn. Moreover, on the next turn, it must choose one of the following. It has to move uh, as an action or a bonus action. It, it has to decide on a move, an action, or a bonus action. It only gets one okay. of the three. It only gets one of the three. Makes sense. Well, it's definitely taking psychic damage because um, that's a negative two. <laughs> It's a whole seven points of psychic damage, but I have a fun little ability that I have Ooh. as a Black Robes Wizard, so I'm mm -hmm. going to take some of my hit dice. I'm going to take all of them and then have that amount. And then I'm going, since it failed its save, I'm going to add this damage to that damage. So that was a seven, a three, a one, and a one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, 12. 12 points of psychic damage. Okay. I am going to quicken spell and cast a cantrip. I'm going to hit it with mind sliver. Okay. Uh, it's an intelligence saving throw. Uh, it's a four this time. <laughs> uh, doesn't do anything. Just disorients them range. It must be. Oh, yeah. It's just damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought I did something fancy. Okay. And. Oh, double sixes. It is 12. More hey. than a third level spell. <laughs> um, that's good. Okay, so this thing is definitely not looking as great as it did coming out from the swamp forest. Uh, it's looking a little, you know, ragged at this point. And that brings us to you. Oh, is that everything for you? No, that's Pardon? no, I'm done. I'm just mocking I was going to say. See, you look dazed. Are you having trouble? <laughs> So it's probably woozy. swaying. It's doing a little sway thing now. Instead of being the one to sway, it is swaying. Uh, all right, garlic. That is your turn now. Um, I mean, I yeah. I mean, I, I'm probably just gonna do the same thing. Go um, hand to hand, garlic. Oh. Go hand to hand. Go so hand to hand. Oh my tentacle to hand. I just made it less nimble, man. Burn it. Burn it. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, Garlic's going to move up 30 feet, and um, does he know what level of bead the the necklace is? Actually, you know what? No, he doesn't care. He throws it. <laughs> third. It's As, a third, 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 third. Oh, it's a third? As yeah. you walk up, uh, Tallulah will, will say, Garlic, be a dear. Place that somewhere where you're not going to hit Reginald, please. Oh, that's right. Um, I forgot the Reginald's Reginald. up there. The doggo. Oh, it's just a dog. You could you could <laughs> place it behind. Be if you and aim behind it, you probably won't because if he was going more towards like the front where the tentacles are sticking out, you should have some play in there. Um well actually, you know what I will do? I will cast uh Scorching Ray at uh Ooh. third level. Okay. Um, which I think means I get God, how many of these rays? Three, uh then I think I, I get one beams. more. Yeah, so I get four. Four rays. Nice. Sweet. All right. Let's see how this goes. First attack. Uh, <laughs> um, is fourteen to hit? Just hits. Oh. Uh, <laughs> guess who rolled a one as a wild magic wizard or oh, sorcerer? Here we, go. <laughs> here we go. Here it comes. <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's finish this off and then figure out what the wild magic does. Here. Okay. Um. <laughs> Uh, let's see. That one was 13, so that one's not going to hit, I'm assuming. Nope. Um, and then that's a nat 20. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what, what I'm going to do for funsies here, that one, the damage on that one, it's going to be your total doubled. Total doubled. Okay. So, yep. the, so the first one, so this was the first one that hit is six damage. And then for the critical, 
Uh, five, so ten. Ten. Okay, so we're looking at sixteen so far. Uh, yeah. Then um, wild magic. Oh, hey, look! It's got the table in here. Like it knew I was going to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, I roll D one hundred. See how this goes. I've never rolled on a wild uh, wild magic table before. Let's see. Let's see I'm if you ever will roll again. I'm mm -hmm. starting to think that Garlock is now a wizard. <laughs> uh, I what? rolled eighty two. You take another action immediately. Sweet. <laughs> okay, that's better than the self fireball. Go for no, it. You, you still have two scorching rays left, of, or one, right? Uh, yeah. You had one that missed, two that hit. Uh, no, no, I, I, I rolled the other one. That one, that one missed. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that, we got that was the sixteen in. Yeah. Fireball. Cool. Um. Well, I. Well, I. I mean. Put the dog back together again. It's made out of metal and hay. Sorry the good thing is, I I will put the dog back together again, unlike you. <laughs> I don't. I'm well put together. I, I'm a, I'm you won't gonna, be if I'm you do, it's, if you damage. A hey, Reginald. you know what? Let's let's have some more fun. I'm just gonna do scorching ray again and give myself another chance to roll one. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh well, that is a uh, 18 plus seven, so I'm assuming that one's gonna hit. That'll like definitely wild hit. magic surge fishing. Holy crap! Mm. 17 plus seven. That hits. And it's 18 gonna be a... plus seven. I've never rolled that well that many times in a row before. They all hit. So let's get the damage on all of those. All right. You dared the dice to wild magic and they got scared. Mm -hmm. Six, six, and uh, eight. So uh, tw uh, math, 20. 20. Yeah, 20, 20 fire damage. Nice. I dropped the dice somewhere and I'm scared now. Okay. Tallulah, we are up to you. Do you, uh, what would you like to do? Uh, Tallulah has uh, reached down as she's chastised Torvin for even thinking about damaging her dog and come up with one of the those big gross swamp rocks and kind of holds it in her hand and looks back over at this giant frog and she's going to catapult it right in its face. Uh, I needed to make a dexterity saving throw DC 16. Which is at a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Why is she picking up a rock? Okay, does not dodge that one. Uh, it's gonna take 18 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And then, okay, Reginald, let's try this again. And Reginald will make Or else you're attack. going to die. <laughs> you will be next, Talvin. <laughs> uh, Reginald is not going to attack. Um, mm -hmm. And the assassin will continue to, um, it looks real. Looks it's terrifying. moving. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to continue to be right there within tentacle range. Okay. Tell me, what what is Reginald doing damage? Oh, Reginald did not hit. Reginald did not will, hit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, it is now this, is that everything you have? What about? That's everything Rupert? I got. Okay. So this brings us to the uh, creature. Which is basically a hypnohemoth. For those of you who watch Paint and Slay, you know exactly what we're talking about right now. I, and, I should go grab mine. It's right over there. <laughs> I mean, say hi. Hi. So this is one of these. Uh, so the creature is going to try and lash out at, uh, well, it is going to try and go for that assassin. One of the assassin. The assassin. Suddenly, Perfect. a Sean Connery. Uh, it will piece. miss with a tentacle. Yeah. And it's going to try another tentacle and it's going to try and go for uh, Torvin. Torvin does a do, 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 26 hit. Does a what? 26. Maybe. Uh, there is a moment. <laughs> Hold on a second. Ooh. The tentacle goes happen? after Torvin. And I look on over at Torvin and I say, I guess I'll be nice just this once. Reginald, please. Uh, Reginald being next to this thing is going to deflect attack. Uh, okay. He has disadvantage on that attack. Oh, okay. Let's try it again. Uh, still going to make the attack. Roll the same thing again. I'm going to uh, use my reaction to cutting words. Um, so I'll expend a bardic inspiration die to minus to the roll. Okay. See if that helps. So it's going to hit and it's going to be 19. Dog didn't even manage to. So what are we tentacle. removing from that one? <laughs> one 18 one. Hit. <laughs> so 18 <laughs> did not roll well 18 damage to torvin uh uh 
one more, buddy, and we could have done it. <laughs> could have mm. just cast shield, and we could have just done the thing. I take 18. Da- How much do I take? Uh, 18. Oh, it was 18 to hit, though. Yeah. 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 No, it was, I, I, it was I 29 to, to hit. Hits. Yeah, it hits. It hits me. It, yeah. You know, so I embrace the damage. tentacle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I need you to give me a... Uh, let's see if you can get out of the grapple. What? <laughs> and again, how much damage? Sorry. 18. see 16. Yeah, it's 18 damage. Oh, 18 to hit and 18 damage. Okay. And does it oppose athletics? Or yep. am I just grappled? You are grappled right now. So you're going to have to escape, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so keep in mind that Torben is now caught up. And I just realized the time. We're still good? Yep. Yep. Okay. Because uh, we're, so- we're at the end of the day. So as long as oh, all of you are okay. There's nothing else coming on next. Yeah. Okay. That's why I'm yeah. just like, oh, we're, we're still fighting. We can, we can and go it's- a few minutes over. <laughs> cool. Uh, so just keep in mind that Torben is now grappled in one of these tentacles as this creature has finished its turns. Uh, and scared. that takes us to the top again, I believe, right? No, it wasn't the top. So then, uh, do, do, do. Virian, you're up. Okay. Um, Cast let's fireball. see this happen. I'm squeezing my insides. <laughs> I have to pee, and I think I have to poop a bit, too. <laughs> <laughs> you should just go ahead, dear. Maybe you'll disgust the creature to death. Okay. I already did. Good. <laughs> um, I'm going to use a bonus action to assume my form of dread. <laughs> Your invisible uh, form of dread. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I'm not invisible anymore. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it, right. But, uh, 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 and I basically just look like even gothier than I do now. <laughs> okay. That's even possible. You know, like the eyes are glowing red, but like mm-hmm. other than that, like mm-hmm. not, a, not a huge change. But, a hot um, topic sign behind you. <laughs> your eyeliner becomes that much more pronounced yeah yeah i get some i get uh ooh, seven temporary hit points nice i'm just gonna put that in before I forget. Lucky gun going, he's so cool <laughs> black parade um, starts playing <laughs> <laughs> um and then i am going to cast dissonant whispers at second level on the hypnohemoth okay. so it's a dc 15 wisdom saving throw <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh wow okay it got a 19 oh damn it still takes half damage though right okay yeah. so what's the half damage we're looking at then uh let's see that is 15 psychic divided by two and then uh because he's got the hex on it, i think he still takes a d6 of necrotic damage divided mm-hmm. by two. so that'll be 15 divided by two is seven and then one d6 divided by two uh, and then an additional two necrotic okay Oh, and it has so, to make another wisdom saving throw now that I've dealt damage to it for the form of dread. Uh, this time it makes a 13. Uh, it is afraid of me. Lovely. Okay. So we have an afraid. So frightened. Frightened. Yep. Lovely. Okay. Until the Noted. end of my next turn. Ooh. Noted on that as well. Okay. So this is definitely not looking good. This It's, it's actually starting to slump a little bit. And the eyes... While it's not doing its hypnotic thing, you can tell that it can't keep its pupils the same shapes anymore. It's like it's trying and it's just not working for it. And the tongue, instead of swaying, it's lolling to the side. Uh, that takes us to you, Torvin. Only a vocal currently- component. So I'm going to Tasha's mind. I'm just going to look right. I'm going to move my moon eyes and make mm-hmm. them fluctuate. And I just want mm-hmm. our eyes to get closer. Like the camera gets tighter on hypnohemoth and it gets tighter on me and we're just trying to outmind each other just okay in like like my nose bleeds and i with whatever it has bleeds okay yeah all right while this is happening i'm going to use my reaction to silvery barbs and give the hypnohemoth disadvantage okay and uh, i will give torvin advantage on his next thing okay so torvin what do you need me to do on my end uh well knowing the silvery barbs do i know that he's like talking smack to it mm. is it is talking smack or is it more you just standing yeah. there being like fair me yeah 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 so, i just silvery just like, barbs is just like i can't really tell he's you can't even barbs. hold on to an elf or something, okay you know, something so really you got lame. something like that okay because yeah, i'm not that witty at the moment but uh that's fine 
I am just going to do mind whip. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, it's a 14 save. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. Which save? Wisdom, right? Uh, intelligence. Intelligence. Okay, so we're looking at an eight. Uh, it takes 10 psychic damage. And again, it has to move. It can only get a bonus action, move, or an action next cool. turn. Okay. And it can't use any of its reactions. And then I'm going to quicken spell again. Mm hmm. And I'm going to mind sliver it again. <laughs> okay. And it's intelligence saving throw, 14. Okay. Uh, does not make it. And it takes five psychic damage as I burrow into this very intelligent frog swamp person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's definitely not looking great. Is there anything else uh, you're going to do? You're just going to stay grappled in its one tentacle that's starting to kind of no, I feel and... I feel good about it. No, I'm like it. I'm like you know whatever. Okay. I mean, okay. I feel thinner. excellent. <laughs> Garlock, you're up. Uh, all right, Garlock's gonna spend a sorcery point to regain uh, spell. Style. You're a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know he's doing this. No um, I love it. And uh, regain a spell slot to cast. Um, uh, he's gonna he's gonna cast a scorching ray at the the higher level again, but uh, ooh, oh god, he's rolling stuff. Uh, but uh, he's this time he's gonna do it all cool. He's gonna make finger guns. Bow, 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 bow. Okay. Because he wants he wants to look cool for for everybody. And what do we have going with that one again? Uh, let's see. First one. Super cool. Um, you have to hit fourteen or above. Okay. Uh, well, we're do, do we want to keep to what we were talking about with real wild magic range? <laughs> Um, sure, why not? Okay, so that oh. one's not gonna hit and it's so a wild magic. Um, mm -hmm. that one is not gonna hit, but it's not wild magic. Cool. Uh, oh, this one does. Uh, that's a 19 plus, so that's 26. Okay, and that, that is uh, 25. Okay, so two of them are gonna two hit. hit. Yeah, um, and that is oh wow, eight and nine damage. Uh, oh, very nice, Garlock, very nice. Thank you. I, I I did the finger guns thing. I felt cool. Mm -hmm. um, That's really super cool. And then last but not least, let's uh let's see what we got here for. I want to see what this wild magic does before I say anything. Uh okay. What does this one do? It gets all its health back. <laughs> what the? Heck? Uh, I got a forty-four, which is for the next minute you can teleport up to twenty feet as a bonus action on each of your turns. And I was just like, I feel really fast. Wow. You're the luckiest wild magic sorcerer ever. <laughs> okay. Wait so, to um, fireball yourself, so. Most excellent. And that's it for uh, Garlock, yes? Yes. Lula. Oh, this thing is still alive. Oh, that's such a bore. Um, I have now pulled kind of a, a decrepit stump out of the ground and once again holding it up casting catapult at second level it needs to make a dexterity saving throw dc 16 oh God, which it I'm does not, not make <laughs> oh, oh, that's three gonna, it's gonna take 16 bludgeoning damage okay so what does it look like Tulula, as you um basically bludgeon the hypno hemoth to death <laughs> this decrepit stump goes flying right at its eyes and there's a moment where it's going to hit Torvin along the way. And then it seems to unearingly move out of the way for some mm -hmm. reason and then smashes into the, the Hypnotoad's eyes, which then fall kind of comically to the side as the whole thing slumps down, um, releasing Torvin. And then I say, ah, good, good dog. Come back, Reginald, my puppy. Trots back um, happily. When he gets over to you, there's suddenly a garlock sitting on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the teleport! I cast, well, then. Caust I, ca I, ca I cast caustic brew on it, and I just start <laughs> melting it with acid. Whatever is left. I don't know coffee. what's happening behind me, but I'm not turning it, around. It might have <laughs> eggs. No, nothing. I'm just like kind of getting mostly the belly. So now there's like two parts of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this it's, it's all of the swamp water is now boiling. It sounds terrible. Whatever's happening behind me. No, it looks great. You should come over here. This nope, looks totally. Oh, here God. The dog it was and feel great about my life. It was full. Three of the people are in it. <laughs> Garlock, you did an excellent job. If you would not like to see what is going on behind you, Reginald can certainly sidestep all the way out of here. I would oh, love that. 
That's and, definitely poo. And uh, <laughs> Reginald, Reginald will sidestep like a crab, like the most adorable corgi crab ever, so that Garlock yeah. doesn't have to just gonna, just gonna put a little extra protection and just put the hat There you go. That. And yes, by doing caustic brew, you would definitely see inside, uh, there, there were some skeletons kind of floating around in the innards. So probably, you know, Got a femur here, get this over here, and definitely wouldn't have. So, yeah, this is clearly what has been gobbling up the uh, missing people. Mm. I found evidence. <laughs> oh, lovely. I'm an dear. investigator. I found bodies inside. I did an autopsy with acid. That's exactly how it's done. Still, still glowing in the eyes from, with my form of dread. I'd be like, I'm needed elsewhere. And I will strum and cast fly on myself and just go. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> my people need me? Did you just, my people need me out of here? <laughs> and then from a distance yeah. in the forest, he's so cool! And I, I, I look up at him as he flies away, and I'm like, do you bleed? <laughs> <laughs> so, to wrap this up, you go back towards BBs. You explain what's happened. Those of you who are left. <laughs> oh. And BB is quite pleased to hear that this whole thing has been figured out and that it's been this hypnohemoth that has been, you know, getting some snacks along the way now that it has become uh, pretty much fully grown. Clearly had been planted there by Hopfree, who decided that its pet was uh, not worth keeping or needed a bigger growing space is really what it boiled down to. And she will thank you profusely. She offers you a free weekend to stay at BB's and also gives you your payment in return, especially because you were so kind to dear Beauregard. And as you sit there uh, at the bar, enjoying your beverages, uh, you basically uh, hear BB talking with Evie. Next time someone is asking for something over and over again, please be sure to tell me because quite frankly, we don't need to bring the swamp water into the house. And we fade out into the distance the sun is setting you hear this music coming from the dance floor people are dancing everyone's moving around everyone is literally hopping to the tunes and that is where we are going to end Yay! the place is happy <laughs> and thank you all so much for sticking with us don't forget we have some really cool things that are happening today so if you haven't yet Log in and check it out. We have the polymorph skins for Minsk and Jorvin. See if I say it in reverse, I don't screw it up. And then you have polymorph Sentry and polymorph Shandy along with the Shandy fan. Very familiar. And don't forget, we also have this fantastic code that's floating around for the Mecha Suit Nova, which I highly recommend you check that one out because it looks amazing. So um, I am the Muse. I have been your DM for today. I'm also the partner manager here at Codename, and I loved having you here with us today. I'm going to quickly go back around the other way, tell us who you are, where we can find you, and then we're going to say our goodbyes. So, Trevor, we're going to go with you first. First off, thank you, V. That was a fantastic game. I loved every minute of it. Uh, hi, I'm Trevor Bettis. I'm the community manager for Isle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on Twitter at the Trevor. There is an A hiding in there. Dylan. Hi, I'm Dylan. I'm at Dylan Wilkes, just like right now. Hey, uh, Todd. I'm Todd. Hi, Todd. That's his Hello. actual normal speaking voice in meetings. Yeah, yeah. I have to get bassy for live streams. Um, yeah, I'm the creative manager. At <laughs> Lauren. I am Lauren. I'm the content coordinator here. Thank you. Thank you, V. This was wonderful. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good evening, and we'll see you all on the flip side of things. Take care. Bye. I'm Tom.